Hey gang, LinkedIn is number one in B2B display advertising in the U.S. And using LinkedIn advertising gives you a great advantage. You can stand out against your competitors while nurturing customer relationships and growing your brand. LinkedIn's targeting tools allow you to reach your precise audience down to their job title, company name, location, and more. That means your ads are being seen by those who matter. Scale your marketing, grow your business with LinkedIn advertising. As a thank you to their customers for helping them grow three times faster than the competition and just for listening to Winfluence, LinkedIn is offering a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash Winfluence. That's right. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence just for you to claim that credit. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence. A hundred bucks in free ads? I'm down. Folks, being a guest on a podcast is perhaps the most effective way to build your own credibility and authority on what you know or what your company does. You can get booked as a guest on lots of podcasts, and Outlier Audio is great at helping you do just that. Outlier Audio focuses on getting entrepreneurs, investors, and business professionals booked on podcasts. Tell your brand story without the need to interrupt an audience with an ad. Be the reason they listen to the podcast. Get started with a five-podcast booking trial to see if you like it. Find out more at outlieraudio.com slash bookme. That's outlieraudio.com slash bookme. On this episode of Winfluence. Would you say that Spark Toro is a software kind of version of that philosophy? You're uncovering what influences your audience, not just what social media stars mention you? Yeah. yeah. So every we are simpatico, my friend. Like clearly we were meant to be friends and, uh, you know, um, hang out together. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. The first social media conference I ever attended was a search marketing expo event back in 2007 or 2008, maybe. While it was being put on by a search-focused company, it was all about social media. I thought it would be a good place to learn and listen and see if my ideas on this emerging space could hold water to others thinking about it. But because it was run by search folks, the roster of speakers included a bunch of SEO people. And one of those was the founder of a little upstart company in Seattle called SEO Moz. Rand Fishkin grew that company and rebranded it as Just Moz. Today, it is one of the most successful SEO and SEM data and services companies in the world. I'm a customer. I've also taken a lot of their courses. Knowing SEO helps my day to day. I was lucky to have met Rand then and have followed him through the years. In 2018, he left Moz, though he's still on the board, I believe. Now he started a new company that is focused on helping brands figure out what influences their prospective customers. Spark Toro is a platform that scrapes public profile data from social media accounts, then analyzes it to offer consumer insights to its customers. It's part market research, part data analysis, and part influence marketing platform. And yes, I said influence marketing platform without the R. In fact, I even asked Rand during our conversation if Spark Toro is the software version of the philosophy we talk about here on Winfluence, that we're in the business of influence marketing, not influencer marketing. Wait till you hear his answer. I invited Rand to chat with me over on Digging Deeper, my interview series for Cornette, but the conversation was super relevant for us here on Winfluence too. So I've pulled that interview out and have it here for you today. We'll talk to Rand Fishkin of Spark Toro about what influences people, how to find out, and what to do with that information today on Winfluence. Before my chat with Rand, though, I want to touch on two fantastic supporters of Winfluence today. You've heard me talk about Tagger quite a bit on this show. That's because they are our presenting sponsor. Tagger is a complete influencer marketing software solution. With it, you can find, prioritize, connect, and collaborate with, measure, and even pay the content creators you use for your influencer programs. I could go on, but you know I use it, you know I trust it, you know I like it. I think you should check it out too. It might be right for your brand or agency. Go to jason.online slash tagger. That URL is important, jason.online slash tagger to go get a free demo. See if tagger is right for you, jason.online slash tagger. And you may have heard me talking about LinkedIn before the show or maybe during the breaks lately. That's because LinkedIn has partnered with me to offer you a $100 advertising credit to get your message in front of the right kind of decision makers. 
I use LinkedIn advertising to target leads based on job descriptions, company, seniority, industry, and more. That means I'm not wasting advertising spend getting my message in front of people who aren't my ideal customers. You can too. LinkedIn is offering you listeners of Winfluence. That's you. You get $100 in ad credits just for listening to this show. Go to linkedin.com slash Winfluence today. That's right. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence. $100 in free ad credits. What are you waiting for? LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence. A conversation with Rand Fishkin about what influences consumers and a special appearance from his influencer wife, Geraldine DeRoyter, the everywhereist. She pops in unexpectedly and says hello. That's next on Winfluence. Well, it's a fun day uh, for us here on the show. When you think of SEO and search, And start firing off names of people who have impacted the industry, particularly from an education standpoint. The name of our guest today is one of, if not the first, out of most people's mouths. Most people in the digital marketing space know Moz. And if you do, you know Rand Fishkin. And he's here with us today. He's not as focused on search anymore, but he has turned his attentions to uh, audience research with an angle on discovering who might influence that audience. And you know I love talking about influence. So that means I need to know more. Rand, good morning. How are you, sir? Very well. Thanks for having me, Jason. Well, good I'm to glad, be here. I'm glad you're here. So let's start with the big question. You are synonymous with Moz, the company you founded and grew into a search juggernaut. Uh, you've now pivoted and are building a new company, Spark Toro. Why does the man many people just straight up associate with SEO and search marketing pivot to focus on what I think of as an influencer tool? Yeah. Uh, let's see. So variety of reasons behind that, but um, some big ones include, A, I I really wanted to build another uh, sector in the marketing universe. So, you know, I I still love marketing. I love doing it. I love helping people do it. Um, I obviously have, you know, pre-existing audience in the marketing world. And so uh, it made a lot of sense to lean on that strength as I was building my next company. Also, uh, when I left Moz under uh, contentious circumstances, I had a non-compete with them. In fact, it's uh, I still have a non-compete in place. Um, that non-compete was renewed after uh, last year when Moz was acquired by a by a private equity firm. And so the the third reason is because in my waning years at Moz, I found that while search was still a powerful uh, marketing tactic. It was not nearly as all-encompassing as um, as I once thought it to be. I think what happened early in my career was that I was sort of given this hammer of rank high in Google's results. And so I pounded every nail with that one hammer, uh, not not considering that, you know, maybe there's other tools in the tool shed. Mm-hmm. So give us a little bit of an elevator pitch on SparkToro. What is it and what problem does it solve? Yeah. Uh, SparkToro is actually super simple. Let's see. My favorite way to describe it is in an ideal world, if you are a marketer uh, and you want to know what your customers and audience pays attention to, so you can go do the right kinds of marketing in all those right places, uh, the best possible way to do it is to get your customers' home addresses, break into their houses, (laughs) steal their phone, get their unlock code, Uh, And then go look on their phone and see all the YouTube channels that they subscribe to and all the email newsletters that show up in their Gmail and all the people that they follow on all their social accounts and what websites they bookmark and visit. But this, of course, Jason, super illegal, (laughs) highly unethical. Yeah. Uh, And so I don't I don't recommend that anybody do this. That's good. But the next best thing, the next best thing you could possibly do is uh, go and get all of the public social profiles and web profiles of your customers and audience and go just look at those public accounts and see everything that they read, watch, engage with, follow, share, talk about, do on those public channels and then aggregate them together so that you've got sort of broad behavioral data and demographic data too. That's what SparkToro does. Awesome. Just like Google, we crawl all of the public social web profiles. Mm-hmm. We connect them all up. We anonymize them, aggregate them, make them searchable. Very nice. So market research and audience data can be expensive and cumbersome to try to figure out. I guess, is that where the inspiration for this came from? 
Yeah, exactly. So, so Casey and I talked to some really smart um, agencies, actually agencies like yourself, right? And and these agencies would like literally for a client, they would they would hire, you know, they'd have a team of two or three engineers whose job it was to build crawlers to go. Okay, I want you to crawl every Twitter account, LinkedIn account, YouTube account, Reddit account associated with like this industry, this field, and then we're going to aggregate all the data together. And that was basically for for one search, one analysis of one audience. Uh, they would spend six figures, literally, yeah. right, in time and energy and cost to do it and build that that report, that single report. And Casey and I were like, we should just build that for the whole internet. <laughs> just just undercut those big six figure research deals right out of the gate. <laughs> I mean, they don't want to spend that money, and no, you know, the engineers don't want to do it. The marketer doesn't want, like nobody wants to do that work. It's a pain right. in the ass. You shouldn't have to, right? It's kind of like saying, you know, before um, whatever, before Moz or or Ahrefs or SEMrush had the link graph, right? Like like you could see all the links that point to somewhere. Right. Well, how would you figure out who linked to your competition and who linked to you, right? In SEO world, right? You could, it was just a royal pain in the butt, like totally impossible to do. And so you, you know, you could manually try and figure it out, but just, you know, beyond difficult, um, you, you really need a tool at scale, right? Someone who's collecting and aggregating this data for you and making it easily available. And so SparkToro is not the only person, like we're not the only people to do this. Um, mm-hmm. Brand watches enterprise edition, very expensive, but very good. Does a great right. job of this. Uh, does it at, at, at scale. Um, which we call it, uh, audience with a, with an S mm-hmm. uh, they do this, a company called helixa.ai, which I think was acquired last year, but th- they do this. The SparkToro pitch is essentially we're the very low cost, very easy, straightforward version. Yep. So if you are looking to get, I want to know what percent of chemical engineers in the UK listen to these 20 podcasts. Like Spark Toro can just tell you what that is. Yeah. And and you've got a, 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 a low volume freemium version so people can get in and play with it. And yeah. then I think the the next level up, if you're actually getting access to some of that extra data is like 38, 40 bucks a month, something like that on the annual plan. So super, super inexpensive, which is very cool. I want to ask about, though, I mean, essentially, I mean, you, you described it. You're going out there and scraping all this public data and putting it into a searchable form. What about the market researchers yeah. as a discipline out there who say, yeah, but you're scraping data that may or may not be relevant. You still need to do qualitative studies to really know your audience. How do you respond to that? I mean, I think an awesome way to do market research and audience research is start with surveys and interviews mm-hmm. and then go get passively collected data at scale from something like SparkToro uh, to go validate how uh, your you know, interview collected, survey collected data points scale to a broad audience. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, if you talk to a bunch of chemical engineers in the UK and, you know, they sort of all told you like, well, you know, podcasting isn't really my thing. I don't listen to very many podcasts. And then you go to uh, run a survey and you see, oh yeah, it's only about maybe 30% of chemical engineers who say they've listened to a podcast in the last week. And then you go to SparkToro and you see, oh, okay. Of the chemical engineers who have public social web profiles, you know, these are the ones that are most popular. Great. Now you have a whole bunch, like now you have interview data, survey data, data at scale. You can go do marketing in thoughtful ways and you know what percent of your audience you're reaching and you know what you're not reaching and you know where you're reaching them. Phenomenal. I I think adding these things together is the way everyone should be doing it. Um, The nice part is, you know, the, the audience research side on the tool side of things is the easiest and cheapest one to do Mm -hmm. instead of being now, you know, what, what it used to be, which is the most expensive way to do it. Right. Um, The, now it's the surveys and interviews that are going to be the, you know, (laughs) more challenging time consuming process. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious, I want to ask this question just to see if you, you kind of catch the vibe I'm throwing here, because I've talked to a lot of our clients at Cornet and, you know, other clients over the years at brands about market research and consumer insights and gathering consumer insights. I wonder if you might agree with the statement that your competition here is not the other tools that you mentioned, but the traditional way of thinking about consumer insights. Ooh, I will be honest with you. 
I believe that our competition, our primary competition is, I just want to throw money at Google and Facebook and let them sort out all my targeting. Mm. I, I'm not going to go bother to figure it out myself. Ah. And frankly, I think that's 95%, 98% of the marketing and advertising universe is I, I will not go bother with figuring out what my audience pays attention to and being present in those places. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to throw money at the ad platforms and count on them to get in front of the right people for me. Yeah. I think that's a really bad, very expensive mm -hmm. move, but it's also easy. So I get it. Yeah. I understand that too. Don't go anywhere, gang. After the break, Rand and I talk about the kinship between his thinking around consumer insights and influence and our perspective about influence marketing versus influencer marketing. That's coming up. Stay tuned. We were talking a little bit before, before we started here. My general philosophy on influence marketing is that it's influence without the R, not influencers. That's the premise of my book and my other, my, my other podcast, Winfluence. Would you say that SparkToro is a software kind of version of that philosophy? You're uncovering what influences your audience, not just what social media stars mention you? Yeah. <laughs> so every we are simpatico, my friend. Like clearly <laughs> we were meant to be friends and, uh, you know, um, hang out together and, and get dinner. Be because, because every single time I am asked about influencer marketing, what I say is, I don't believe in influencer marketing for most brands, products, and companies. Okay. I, I just don't think like dude with six pack abs who poses on beaches around the world and like takes off his clothes, that paying that dude 500 bucks to pose with your product is going to sell more of it. There's a few maybe rare exceptions here and there, but unfortunately that has become synonymous with influencer marketing. Yeah. And it, and it kind of pisses me off because... Like eight years ago, influencer marketing used to mean go find all the sources of influence, mm. media, publications, uh, podcasts, blogs, YouTube channels, I don't know, subreddits, uh, mm -hmm. webinars and events, conferences, all the things that your audience pays attention to and go do marketing in those places in the right ways. Yep. That kind of influencer marketing circa 2013, I definitely believe in. I love it. I think it's a great idea. And so I think what's frustrating is that people like you and I have to rebrand mm -hmm. as influence, no R marketing, <laughs> um, just in order to get this message across that we don't mean six pack ab dude. Yeah. I like, I like the fact that you, you, you go six pack ab, ab dude. I go peace sign duck lips. I'm just, mm, that's my, that's my way. <laughs> yeah. Of yeah right. Sure. I just, I don't, <laughs> I, that, that universe of whatever you want to call them, influencers, creators, yeah. they do reach a certain subset of a target market. And look, if you have a particularly sort of relatively low cost, I don't know, fashion product, travel mm -hmm. product, um, uh, health and beauty product yeah. that appeals to, you know, uh, generally a young demographic, mm -hmm. Influencer marketing might work fine for you, but the fact that it's a, whatever it is, you know, $10 billion industry and influence no R marketing is a hundred million dollar industry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> makes no sense. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely right. And, and when you look at a brand like, you know, L'Oreal, who has a lot of sub brands under that, that moniker, and they spend, you know, 75% of their marketing budget, which is in the billions of dollars, by the way, on influencer marketing. They're doing that and influencers with an R you're you've tapped into you exactly described why they're doing that because it's smart. If they can say, Hey, if we can find a thousand people who have an average of 150,000 audience members and we can make them wear our skin cream for a couple of weeks, that's as effective as a massive television campaign and probably cost as much, but it probably works. Yeah. yeah I mean, I think that this is, there are certain niches, certain products wh where it, it does make sense. But even with L'Oreal, I would, I would have the question fundamentally, if you took, let's say 30% of those billions of dollars that you spend on influencers and considered and looked up folks who, you know, I don't know, use the hashtag 
makeup online or, you know, follow a, a, a source of influence, like a, like a beauty blog online. And you looked at all the other blogs and websites and email newsletters and podcasts and YouTube channels and social accounts that they follow that are not just sort of these, the, the classic influencer profile, would you be able to take that budget and earn a lot more traction by putting dollars and effort there? Mm-hmm. And my suspicion is the answer is yes, but because it doesn't have a well-defined name and category, like this particularly kind of marketing, influence with no R marketing right. is not well understood. There's very little investment in it. I think it's a lot like content marketing uh, maybe 15 years ago. Right. Very few people did it because it was not talked about and it yep. didn't have a category and there was no VP of content marketing at any companies. Mm-hmm. And now there is and content gets investment. And so maybe we just need another decade before sources of influence, you know, becomes a channel. Yeah, very good. So I want to ask a quick question. I want to dig in uh, to one piece of or a couple of pieces of the data that Spark Toro surfaces, because one of the things you do surface is, um, you know, the, the websites and the podcasts and, you know, some of the media outlets that this the audience that you're looking for, you know, might go to. And if, as I understand it, you're kind of pulling that information from maybe links they share, content that they interact with related to those websites. And then I go back to, and this is going back to probably around the first time that we actually met each other, which was at a conference in 2008, I think. There was uh, a philosophy back then and some research that showed that uh, 90% of the people on social networks, and it's probably changed, I would suspect it's changed a little bit. But 90% of the people on social networks are lurkers. They don't actually do anything. They see, they watch, but they don't engage, they don't interact, they don't share content. And then I think there was 9% that actually did the engagement interaction, then 1% actually created the content. I would imagine those numbers have shifted, but I would imagine maybe that it, maybe it's not 90%, but it's probably more than 50% of the people out there who lurk. So is that just a big black hole that we're not going to be able to get to with that qualitative study no, no, no. Or, or what? Lurking is awesome. As long as your profile is public, at least for SparkToro, lurking is great, okay. right? Because you still, in order to lurk, you have to follow things. Mm. You might follow a hashtag. You might follow a community. You might follow a uh, person on Twitter or follow someone on LinkedIn or follow, you know, you join a subreddit, you subscribe to a YouTube channel. You don't have to create or share or comment or like ever, but your behavior, your public behavior of you know, following these sources tells us a ton about you. Even if you never share a link, Mm -hmm. if you reply to someone who shared a link, or if you um, subscribe to, uh, sorry, uh, if you, if you follow an account on Twitter or Facebook and that account is clearly associated with a website, Uh, right? Like the, the data is there. And so passive um, participation in social pro in, in social media is, fantastic for us. We we still see all of that uh, data behind the scenes. The thing that we try and be mindful of is profiles that are not active anymore, mm-hmm. right? And so we don't know last login date. So the one thing that we do inside SparkToro is we try and prioritize accounts that have some publicly viewable activity. They followed a new account. They They tweeted something, they liked something, they posted something on LinkedIn, or they updated their bio or whatever. They've done something active on their accounts in the last uh, 120-ish days. Mm -hmm. After that, if we've seen no activity at all from that person, we we start to treat their account as something we shouldn't include in the profiles that we return and analyze. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously, if the behavior changes in the future, right, we can can re-include them, but if you're searching for like what do chemical engineers in the UK listen to and we see a bunch of accounts that haven't done anything in 120 plus days, we're not going to look at those ones. Yeah. Right. Cause their data, they might be following things from four years ago, but they're not even in the field anymore. They just haven't updated anything. Yeah. We want to look at what are the people who are active doing. Right. And I would, I mean, if this is, you know, scraping public data, then you probably have more insight into LinkedIn than most people have. I would imagine. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we actually uh, we do um, a lot with data partners on on LinkedIn because mm-hmm. LinkedIn's a pain in the ass to get data out of, but a bunch of people have done a good job with it. And so we partner with them. We 
collect some stuff ourselves. We, you know, we can connect it up to the profiles that we have in our index. And then they have like a ton of the full profiles, demographics, all that right. kind of stuff. And yes, LinkedIn, yeah. I think Twitter is our uh, most available network. LinkedIn sure. is number two. Uh, YouTube, we're actually getting <laughs> a bunch more data from, from Reddit coming up here. Uh, and then Facebook, public Facebook, um, and then public Instagram. We shied a little bit away from Instagram initially just because we did not want to be associated as an influencer marketing tool, but um, <laughs> we're starting to get more of it. I got you. I got you. Reed, you loud and clear on that one. Yeah. Um, well, okay. So this data, outside of the obvious answer, if I'm a Spark Toro customer and I'm, I'm searching for these uh, audience sets and I'm understanding more about these audience, the obvious you know, logical first step for me is I can use this information on where they go and what they listen to and what people might influence them or what entities might influence them. I can use that to target my advertising or buy advertising on those pl platforms. I can partner with these sites that the audience gravitates to. What are some of the other ways that a brand can use Spark Toro's data to kind of flesh out smarter activations and campaigns? The use cases are extremely broad, but if, for example, you're doing persona development for a product launch, you can get demographics and behavior about a persona, and you can build a very data-driven persona um, if that's something that, that your team likes to do mm -hmm. with SparkToro. Uh, if you are organizing any type of, maybe you're, you're running a webinar series or a mm -hmm. podcast or a conference or event, or you are uh, putting together a, uh, a survey or you're trying to get something amplified in your field, you can get a list of all the people who probably will be most influential there. I would, I would recommend that too. That's um, good stuff. And the, 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 li the other list of use cases is long. Yeah. So uh, my wife is going to sneak into our shot now. Oh, hi. Hi. Wor world famous author. Just jumping yes, in indeed. on the show. How about that? I heard world famous, which is totally inaccurate, but I'll take well, it. Okay. Pacific Northwest <laughs> famous. How's that? Hi, honey. Hi. Uh, hi. Okay. Take care. <laughs> well, there you go. We yeah, rare special. appearance. She doesn't she doesn't come into the shed much, but that was great. Special treat on the show today. I like mm -hmm, that. That's mm -hmm. good stuff. Well, we were actually just getting ready to to let you get back to your your life there. Uh where can people find you and Spark Toro on them their interwebs? Yeah, yeah. Uh so like you said, Jason, which I appreciate, you can set up a free account at sparktoro.com. I I am personally most active on Twitter where I'm at Randfish, but uh you can also email me if you're like, "Hey, I I'm trying to find this audience. I can't figure out what search query to use." I'm Rand at sparktoro.com and, and happy to help folks out. That's awesome. Well, we'll make sure there's links to all that stuff's in the show notes. Rand, I've always been a, a big fan and, and have learned a lot from you over the years. I'm also a longtime Moz customer and will eventually be a longtime SparkToro customer too. So thank you for all you do to make us smarter about our marketing service. Great to be able to catch up, learn more about this and what you're up to. So thanks for being here. Yeah, look forward to it. Thanks so much, Jason. Take care. All right. As you can tell, he's a smart one, gang. Go check out the free version of Spark Toro at sparktoro.com. Connect with and follow Rand on LinkedIn or Twitter. Always a good follow. And by the way, please call my lawn care company and tell them to stop blowing leaves when I'm recording interviews. I'm kidding. That won't do any good. Folks, uh, don't forget to drop Windfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We are on all of them, I believe. Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartMedia, Podchaser, TuneIt, Good Pods, if we're not where you listen, let me know. I'll flog someone. Whatever your app or listening mode, if you're listening to us right now, and, and don't let this shock you, you, you are. Look for the stars or ratings on that app or site and tap or click and let us know how we're doing. Also, if you'd like a deep dive on influencer marketing topics every so often, subscribe to my email newsletter at jason.online slash subscribe. I send it about every four to six weeks, and I recently reconfigured it to be a little bit shorter and a little bit more useful for you in little you know, sort of bite-sized nuggets of information. I do go deep on a topic each week, but then that's kind of a click over and read a longer article if you want to. The rest of it is kind of short and pithy and to the point, gives you some case studies and all that good stuff. So go to jason.online slash subscribe and get on that list. And I'd love for you to help make a future episode of Winfluence awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Send an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on your phone and email me the file, and then I'll let you ask the question right here on the show using the recording. Regardless of how you ask it, voice or text, I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. 
If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. Hey there, we have got another fantastic marketing podcast for you, if I do say so myself. (laughs) I'm Carrie Barrett. I'm the host of the VIQ podcast. VIQ stands for Video IQ. And in each episode, I teach you how to create standout DIY video. I'm talking about turning your phone into a money-making machine. And this is for all parts of your funnel, social right at the top, all the way down through live streaming at 